there's a few different stages when you're making an anemone flower. Um, I do tend to do it over two days because it is better that the center part of the flower dries out because if you start um, touching it when it's not dry, it's simply gonna fall off the wire. So a few of the things we've got here for making this flower today is we've got a veining board, which is available from Cake Stuff. Obviously we've got our fancy cutters, some treks and some glue. We've got our ball tool and our rolling pin. I'm using these colours today which is the Pro Gel, it's the purple and I think this one's the strawberry colour. Okay, we've got a 18 gauge wire today and we've also got some 24 gauge wires today. So we've also got in this tub here a mix of gelatin and it is also the black sugar flare dust. Now by mixing these two together, I've got a centre that I've already made, you can see here, in this centre it's quite textured, when you've got an anemone the centres are like, um, they're, they're small, black, they've got almost like a bit of a fluffy appearance to them, so just by mixing the gelatin together with the dust, um, it gives you that appearance. So I always have some of these made up. I also use this for the Bunaya berries, um, but I do it with the grey. So it's the same kind of method as before. You take your wire, you then want to bend the edge over, like so. Okay, so what you're then going to do is you're gonna take a little bit of your flour paste, Squire's Kitchen flower paste, it's always the Squire's Kitchen that I use. It's a really good paste, it's a nice paste that dries really, really quickly. Okay, so you'll notice that I've grabbed a little bit of green flower paste, okay? So it doesn't really matter the colour that you use, use whatever you've got kicking about in the bottom of your bag um, and it just, it's, it's gonna get covered anyway with the gelatin mix. So what you then want to do so you want to take your wire and you want to dip in your glue, wipe the excess off on the back of your hand and push it into the ball. So what you're going to do here is you want to reduce the size of this ball. So you're going to just squeeze the bottom of it and as before you're rolling it in between your two fingers here. I'm going to take some of this excess off. Now you don't want to make, if you look at pictures of anemones online, the centres aren't that big. You don't want a massive wad of sugar, uh, flour paste in the centre there, it never looks good. So basically, same as last time when we was doing the other tutorials, you're just taking off the excess and you'll see that I'm flattening the top here. So sometimes the wire pokes through, that's totally fine, you just take your finger and push it back again. And you almost want to make this in it like a little disc. Here we go. So by flattening these sides here, when you come to add your stamens, they'll sit directly underneath, okay? You'll notice I've also got a little bit of uh, flower paste on the um, wire here, leave that there, that's totally fine. It just acts as like, it just kind of keeps it all in place. So what you would do with that, is you would put it to the side and you would let it dry overnight for 24 hours. You really want that to be hard so that it doesn't come off. Because when you start taping this flower together, if this is soft, it's just gonna pop off the top like so. So obviously I've got one that I done earlier, bit of a blue Peter moment, okay? So this one's hard, it's been drying for a while now. So what you then want to do is you want to take your gelatin mix. Okay, so you're gonna glue all over your bud, like so. Don't be shy with your glue. Loads of glue on, because you want to completely cover this bud. Okay, so you can see, and that's plenty of glue on it. You then want to take your little tub and you just want to dip this in and roll like so, making sure that you get the whole thing covered. Okay, so there we have a nice textured bud. 
So what you then would do with that is you can spray it, if you like, with a little bit of glaze and all that does is it just sets it in, stops any of the dust from falling off onto your petals when you're um, adding your petals. Quite often I make white in anyways and if you've not sprayed it then the dust does come off so please be wary of that. So what you would do is you then put that to one side and you just let that set. While that is setting, you then take some stamens, okay? So I buy these stamens from Etsy. I find that Etsy is the cheapest place to buy them. and um, You can buy them in bunches of 5,000. So what you're needing here is you're needing six bunches of 10 stamens, okay? So we're just gonna quickly count eight, 10. I mean, it's entirely up to yourself. If you want to make it look more full, you can. You can add more bunches into your um, flower. It's, it's at your own discretion, really. I find that that kind of works well, but some people like them to look a little bit fluffier. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, I'm going to put these to the side. Now, I have taken a 24 gauge wire and I've trimmed it down. Always using 24 gauges for my wired flowers. You then want to take your stamens, put them together in a bunch, take your wire, so you're halfway down. You can see, halfway down like so, you're going to wrap your stamens over. So that it's then like this, and then you're going to twist your wire. And what that does is if you're twisting tight, it just secures them all together in one bunch. So like I said before, you need six bunches of 10 to go all the way around, okay? So if you've twisted that tight enough, then your stamens should stay upright like so, okay? So when you're coming to do these on your actual flower, you'll see here, I've taped these on, so you can see just exactly how full looking that is. Um, you're going to tape these on all the way around, like so. So obviously I'm not going to tape this one on because it's wet. But you can see just how nice that looks when you've got loads of them on. So that is how you do your centers. So ideally your centers need to dry overnight. You can do your stamens the night before and just let them sit. You then want to tape them all the way around and then just put it to the side and I'll show you how to do the petals. So the petals for your anemone is, it's basically, it's so easy to do, it's, it's ridiculous. So you've got in the set, you've got two sizes in your cutter, you've got your small and your large. You need five of the small and seven of the largest and that is it. Nothing else, nothing more, that is it. So I will show you using the veining board. I don't know if any of you has used a veining board much. I'm just gonna get some color. So again, 24 gauge wires. You need to cut out your wires before you start doing anything. Have them sitting at the side. Okay, so if you just put a little bit of checks into your paste. So the colours I have used is purple and strawberry, which is in your Pro Gel. Um, I quite often make these flowers in a nice light shade, so I thought today it'd be nice to do them in a slightly darker purple. You can dust these flowers if you want, I tend not to. Okay, so. What you need to do is roll it into a sausage. You'll see that there's the grooves on the board here. So basically you're taking your rolling pin and you're rolling over the grooves. Okay. So what you want to do is when you're rolling on the board, you obviously want to put a little bit more pressure on coming down this way. You need to have a little bit more flower paste at the bottom of the grooves for the wire going in. But you also need to make sure you've got nice thin petals. So just by being aware of that and pushing halfway down your paste, it thins it out and keeps the paste where you need it to be. So we can see here, 
This is just flipped over and it's not supposed to, but that's fine, we won't use that side. Okay, so we'll take the small cutter. You can see that I have got grooves. Basically, your cutter is going over the groove. The tip of your cutter should face you. Okay, let's put that to one side. So you would be doing five of these. Okay, so you can see that you've got your vein here. You take your 24 gauge wire and then you just want to insert it into the groove part very, very carefully, very, very gently, like so. Once you've inserted the wire carefully, you then want to vein your petal. Now, I mean, it's not imperative that you vein these, but it does look nice. So you're basically pushing it down. Now this veiner is from the Vanilla Valley. I will have veiners available on the website for you to purchase along with the cutters. It's entirely up to you whether you want to buy them or not. Some of you might already have a lot of veiners. Okay, so basically what you do now is you're just thinning out the sides. So once you've thinned this, because obviously you don't want it to be too thick, you then want to place it on an apple tree, available from Tesco's. You don't want them to be too curved, you just want them to grab a little shape of the apple tree. And then you want to let these dry overnight. Okay, so now that you've cut out veined and um, shaped all of your petals, I'm going to show you how to put your flower together. So as said previous, it's five of your smaller petals, seven of your larger petals. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place the petals in front of us. So we've got our first five. Now obviously they've been in the tray, they're wired and they've got this lovely little wee shape here, but that is not how we're going to attach it to the flower. We need to bend these wires back. but. Please take note, when you're bending these wires back, please hold your flower at the base and then bend your wire. Because if you go just simply bending your wire, you're going to bend it completely out of your, your petal altogether and it's going to be absolutely null void, you won't be able to use it. Okay, so you see I'm just bending slightly, bending. So when you're wiring these flowers you don't need your wires too long obviously you can see mine's are nice and short here and when you're taping them onto your flower you need to make sure that you've taped them quite tightly otherwise they're going to start spinning which is never good when you put the flower together so we're going to take a little bit of our tape now i've used brown tape today but you can use any color you want because in fairness you're not really going to see it when it's on the uh, cake so i'm just releasing the glue so We've got our centre, so we're going to take our first flower petal and we're going to push it as close as we can to the actual base of the flower there and we're going to start taping. Now as a general rule of thumb when I'm taping, I start it off and then I go round twice, so I'll go once, twice. And then I'll then add another petal. And what I do is I work clockwork when I'm wiring flowers, so you can't go wrong. Don't worry about getting them in any specific order or anything like that at the minute, because the beauty of having wired flowers is you can move them about once you've actually attached all the petals. So it's not imperative that they're all in place at the minute. Don't stress yourself about that. Okay, so we're just working all the way around. One, two, so you're kind of keeping that tension on your tape quite tight. Mm -hmm. This is quite a nice colour actually. One, two, so 
what I'm going to then do is you can see that's the first five petals put on I'm then going to go round and I'm going to do the next seven petals so if you just pull your tape that's the good thing about this tape you just pull it and start again put your flower to one side you don't want to destroy anything take your next seven petals one two so you'll notice that these are not too frilly they've got a little bit of movement to them but not too much the anemone if you look at it always look at your flowers online have a look at what it is you're making um, and then that way you've got a good guidance they're generally not a frilly kind of flower um, but they are nice and soft petals so again we're going to be bending these wires back so we're just holding at the base and bending don't want to break anything at this important stage come so far okay so you can do these anemones in all kinds of different colors they're really really nice they're very very nice in the pale pink but I suppose it depends on what your bride has in her bouquet so what I'm going to do now is obviously I've not moved any of these petals yet but I do tend to stick the next layer on in between the first kind of petals so that you're kind of covering a gap okay so we will attach this one here you might find that when you're doing this your old fingers and thumbs to start with it can be um, hard going <laughs> until you kind of get into your own way of doing stuff don't worry, it will all come together. But remember as well that these petals are quite delicate. I'm just kind of going around a few times with these bigger ones. Just to be on the safe side. These flowers are very delicate so um, personally when I'm traveling with these kind of flowers I don't put them on the cake until I reach the venue um, I actually put them in a box with the bubble wrap because you don't want any accidents because they've got the wires in them you're kind of weakening them a little bit by putting the wires in the petals and they are susceptible to breaking so it's work with caution So, now I'm going to tape this all the way down. There we go. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently move my petals. is quite an open flower and you can also use your snippers to move the petals if you're finding that they're a little bit delicate still use your snippers rather than breaking stuff there we go okay so just gently gently opening so you can see now these are quite nice as well if you want to add a little bit of greenery you can obviously tape some leaves and stuff onto them um, and it just kind of finishes them off but you can see here that it's quite a nice open big flower so you wouldn't need a lot of these on a cake as such maybe three or four kind of coming down the cake filled in with some nice bits of greenery and some little filler flowers so that is how I make an anemone it's a very very simple um, flower to do but it's really effective um, and like I say have fun making them I hope this tutorial has been helpful okay bye